coming up on sustainability in Wellesley. Okay. Oh. Oh wow. But I've never ever had to worry about getting stung. A new study on malnutrition in honeybees, plus tour the inside of a beehive. Wellesley Media's Grant Mukai meets with researcher Haley Schofield. Don't miss it. Hey, Grant Mukai from Wellesley Media here, and I'm here today at the lovely Wellesley College greenhouses to take a look at their apiary. That's beehive in scientific language. Bees in North America and Europe and across the world in general are having a really difficult time lately. We see huge bee declines uh, annually, about 30% of bees are lost over the winter. And one of the main killers is a parasite uh, called Varroa destructor, but there's a lot of other factors that are involved in bee decline as well, including uh, some types of pesticides, uh, pollination practices, and um, other stressors that the bees go under. But one thing that we're currently looking at here is the effect of malnutrition on bees, particularly larval malnutrition and how that might affect adult performance and behavior later in life. This is the observation hive that is being used as part of this study. Now Haley's going to show us a little bit about some of the aspects of the hive as well as some of the bee behaviors. Bees are actually, um, they're eusocial, uh, which means that they're there's very few groups that are eusocial animals, and so humans are like social groups. But these, um, they have a reproductive division of labor, so there's only one um, organism that reproduces really in the colony and that's the queen bee. So this is the queen right here um, and all she really does is she lays eggs. So there she is inserting her abdomen into a cell um, and this is her attendant group. So these are younger um, daughters of hers that are surrounding her and they'll feed her um, and take care of her. So there's a waggle dance. Um, there's actually four dances but the ones that you can really easily see are that the waggle dance and that's kind of the there's great food out there go get it dance that one forager, forager will perform to tell another foraging bee where floral resources are. Let's see who is dancing. Of course no one at this moment. Um, Here we go. Um, well, here's some tremble dancers. It's kind of like the law of bee research. You can never find a dancing bee when you want one. So this bee right here, she's waggle dancing. So she's doing kind of a figure eight dance um, and vibrating her abdomen. And then you can see the bees following her kind of around this. They're touching her with um, their antennae and she has um, scents from the flower so that kind of and indicate the quality of the floral resource. Okay, now from we, what we know of the this algorithm that's encoded in the dance, it, there's, it tells, you know, um, distance and direction. So um, wh what were you saying? What, what have we interpreted so far? So that encodes the distance, and that's in the, the waggle where they vibrate their abdomen um, really quickly in the middle of the figure eight. That's uh, the distance, so a really long, um, Waggle dance, sometimes the vibrating will be like maybe 10 seconds, and that's a really, really uh, distant floral resource, so like miles away, you know, three or four miles maybe. Um, and then the circle, um, or the angle that the dance, that the vibrating part is performed, um, the angle from the top of the hive to the, ang to the dance, um, that's the same as the angle of the sun to the floral resource when you exit the hive. So what we're doing is we're trying to kind of mimic the spring, it's called the spring pollen dearth when there's a cold snap and the bees can't go out to go get more 
pollen or the flowers aren't blooming, the pollen just isn't available. So we're trying to simulate that. We put um, larvae with adult bees in a box, so essentially take part of the beehive, put it in a box, and keep it in a cold incubator. Um, and we limit the food or the pollen that goes in there, but give them lots of honey so that the adults can survive. And this kind of forces the bees to make those redistribution choices. Um, sometimes they cannibalize the younger brood to feed to the older brood if they really don't have enough food. And so we're forcing them to make those physically smaller bees. We're Tiger Pack 135, Den 3, and you're watching the Wellesley Channel. Also this week on Wellesley Media. I'm here at Schofield Elementary School. For Mr. Wellesley event, Grant Mukai is there to fill you in with recent coverage of the library's 10th anniversary and Schofield Elementary's 20th annual road race. Check out the programming guide to find out when to tune in. Moving away from the observation colony, Haley's going to show us some of the regular areas where the bees live. The yellow and white colony, they're really nice. Um, and there's not too many of them. This is the mean colony, so we avoid opening that one. All right. Now, what are you doing with that, with that device there? So I'm going to smoke the bees. Um, and this kind of calms the bees. Beekeepers have been doing this for a long time. Uh, when the bees get alarmed, they emit a pheromone, uh, which actually smells like bananas. And the smoke kind of masks that and prevents it from spreading among the bees and getting them all worked up. So when the bees sm smell that pheromone, they, they kind of all freak out and go into attack mode. So if you get stung, then that alarm pheromone will be all over you. So like if we get stung, we put the smoke, we'll, we'll like smoke ourselves and our tools if we accidentally kill the bee. Um, and that kind of helps keep everybody calm because the bees evolved in trees, um, you know, which could burn down occasionally. The smoke causes them to go and eat the honey, all, the, all their honey. So it kind of keeps them preoccupied and distracted while, you know, you're like stealing the brood or whatever you need to do in there. So we just smoke the entrance here. And then um, with bees, as long as you move slowly and are patient, you have to work to get them to sting you most of the time. Occasionally there'll be a rogue bee that just is angry or kind of more alarming than others. Okay, so this is interesting. You guys have been busy building comb. I've always really liked bees, even before I started working here. Um, and I've always really liked insects. So I think working with the bees kind of comes uh, naturally. When, you, when you're when you working with bees, it's good to wear, I, I guess, a light color, like white, and not red or black, because then they might think it's a bear. Right. And that's not, you know, a rule for, like, general if you're going to go to the picnic and or if you're going to go to the park and have a picnic. Um, it's just when you're opening the colonies, bees see black and red as the same color um, and their main predator, you know, over the time that they've been evolving were dark furry mammals and so the less you look like a dark furry mammal, the better. And it's okay to reach in there with your bare hands and pull it out. Yeah, some people wear gloves but the bees are pretty nice. Um, they're used to touching each other and living in, co in close quarters. Okay. Oh. oh, wow. This is more what a normal frame looks like. So it's covered in bees here. See, we always check to make sure that we don't see the queen just because she's really fragile. Um, and if something happens to the queen, then they have to make another one, um, which takes a long period of time and is a lot of work. So we like to avoid that. I don't see her here. Um, so this is a normal frame. This is sealed brood right here in this area, the dark sealed over area. And um, underneath that layer of wax, oh, there's, a moth. Um, there's 
uh, pupae underneath here. So bees that have completed their larval stage and then they pupate for 11 to 12 days and then they'll emerge as adults. Um, and also on here, these are the male bees. And the male bees um, are kind of fun to play with because they can't sting or bite or anything. They're perfectly harmless. And they don't do any work in the hive except to mate with queen bees, virgin queen bees from other hives. Well, I do have to say, that's probably one of the more exciting aspects of the job I've got here at Wellesley Media. I mean, I've filmed a lot of things in town, but I've never, ever had to worry about getting stung. Now, concerning the scientific research that's been happening here, the conclusions are all preliminary and confidential, so we're not allowed to talk about that on camera. But nevertheless, it's a great day, great location. Uh, if you're in the area, be sure to come down and check out the greenhouses and maybe the apiary while you're at it. Just be sure to ask for a guide, ask for someone to show you around because this area back here behind the greenhouses is definitely not a place you want to be out exploring alone. Want to rewatch this show or other episodes of Sustainability in Wellesley? Check out our on-demand player online where you can watch back episodes of both Sustainability in Wellesley and Wellesley in Artistic Sphere, as well as several of our other popular shows, wellesleymedia.org.